discuss. I definitely want to get to a few listener uh, Q and A's um, because I think we had some pretty decent, a decent amount of interest on Twitter. Actually, I think you were one of the more popular listener Q and A guests everybody. on the podcast. Yeah, so uh, I definitely want to get to those. Do you have about fifteen more minutes where we can yes. maybe talk yeah. about running shoes and then get to the listener Q and A? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Definitely wanted to talk about running shoes because when it comes to running, I think this is one of the more popular topics. Everybody's always thinking, what type of running shoes should I get? People are always asking me on Twitter, what do you think about these shoes? And I'm just like, I, I really don't know. I'm not a biomechanics expert. I'm not selling a type of shoe. And in general, I try to just tell people, you know, if it feels comfortable, it's probably, you know, a decent shoe. Um, and that's not the greatest advice, but it's kind of the best that I want to give. The last thing I want to do is, t uh, you know, recommend a shoe to somebody and then they get hurt right. and, you know, come right. after me. So selecting the right running shoes, what are some of your top recommendations on, you know, selecting the right shoes? If somebody is thinking about whether they're a runner or taking up running and want to get a good pair of shoes for them that are going to help prevent injury, that are going to be comfortable. What do you suggest uh, are some of the best steps to select the best running shoes? Sure. And that, that's, that's actually a, a great question. And again, I'm going to use the word best for uh, what is going to promote the healthier uh, foot motion. And how does that translate up going, going up the body? So uh, um, this is probably going to be an unpopular statement, but uh, shoe companies don't make money if they don't sell shoes. And so each year there's going to be a new variety of things out there, new adjustments, new tricks of the trade, new gimmicks, whatever they might be. What I try and look for are what is still going to keep the foot in a natural position. So basically when you land, what's going to get your heel down to the natural position where it should be and not up on a wedge. So I look for shoes that don't have a high heel and a low toe. So the heel to toe drop, we want that to be low so that we get that full natural um, extension, if you will, that heel down to the ground, nice Achilles stretch, let the muscles do their job. The next thing we also wanna look for are, uh, and if you look on the inside of the shoe, some are designed to have a lot of arch support and posting in there. Some are very rigid and control the midfoot motion. So if you go into a shoe store and you pick up a shoe and you can wrench it pretty easily and there's not a lot of stuffing in there, your foot is probably gonna be working a little bit harder to control the motion and it's doing its job. But if you go in there and it's a really fat shoe and you're having a tough time twisting it and it's really stiff in the middle, that changes how your foot is transmitting force from when you hit the ground to rolling off on the heel and then up through the body. It's going to change what your body is doing. And shoes that do that um, are more likely to cause problems than not. And so we look at shoes that have a little bit of flexibility to them, that the inside of the shoe should be uh, really free of a lot of the materials that provide a lot of art support, stuffing in there, air cells, gimmicky things. We, we don't need that. We just need a shoe that has a nice resilient bottom to it, pretty flexible, kind of looks like this mm -hmm. style. So the, for the people who can't quite see it, it's a shoe that's got a very evenly, an even height from the heel to the toe, a nice wide toe box that's shaped like a foot um, instead of very narrow or pointed. A shoe should not feel tight or really snug on your foot. You should be able to fully wiggle your toes and splay them. So that way, when your foot hits the ground, the foot can do its job and splay the toes and create that tress or support so it can bounce back and give you that energy as you step and bounce off. Don't let the shoe do the work. Let your foot and all the structures of the foot do it. What can happen over, yeah, so what can happen over time is the more shoe you put on your body, the less uh, you're going to be able to feel the ground underneath your foot, and you're not going to be able to react as well, and you might fall into mechanics that are a little less favorable, which means knee dive, pelvic drop, foot aversion, all those things we don't want. So a shoe that's a little bit thinner, you can feel the ground a little bit more readily, you can respond and interact with the ground a little bit more healthy. I hope I explained that okay. Perfectly. Yeah. And I think that's a very, a very diplomatic answer because it avoids, you know, people want to know what brand should I buy? And all yeah. of these brands have shoes that fall into yeah. the category of the shoe you're describing, something that's flexible, low yeah. heel, the toe drop. Regarding that, do you, is there a particular number that you want or maybe just as low as possible? Because I know there are, you know, some shoes that are 30, you know, uh, yeah. what is it in millimeters, maybe 30 millimeter yeah. drops. Some are, you know, 10 or there, less. 
Yeah, so there's 30, so when you see the really, really big number, that's usually the heel or the stack height. So that's usually like, if it's really high, it's in the mid thirties, mm -hmm. that's like a pillow. Um, when we talk about heel to toe drop, a big drop is like 10 to 12 millimeters. That's pretty big, that puts your foot in a wedge position. Then there's the moderate, which is like the six to eight. And then there's the lower or the minimal, which we like to define as more zero to four. People you know, have different definitions of that, but really operationally, we want it to be as low as possible. We want the foot to feel like when you hit the ground, it feels natural. That's what we're looking for. Um, and technically, if you have anything that's over an inch in height, that's actually considered a high heel. Mm -hmm. So for those folks who are running in shoes that have heels over an inch, you're running in high heels, which is a very different mechanic than a nice flat foot that has a different a feel to it. Yeah, uh, no doubt. And you can definitely feel it in wearing the different shoes. I mean, you can certainly feel when a, a, it's putting you in a weird or compromised position. Yes. And so the one thing I do want to caution people about too, is that I don't want you to hear this and think, oh shoot, I have a, a 12 millimeter drop. I got to get rid of those and run out and go buy a zero. Transition, please transition. And so what I mean by that is take the next few months to go ahead and maybe do a shoe that has a moderate heel to toe drop. And then a few months after that, then graduate to something that's the minimal. And the reason we do that is that you're gonna be using completely different muscles, including those on the posterior part of your kinetic chain, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calf muscles, even your foot muscles are gonna be used intrinsically differently and you're gonna get sore. And we don't wanna cause injury as you're trying to make a favorable change from one thing, just don't go too quickly. So that period of time would usually mean introducing the new shoe around the house for about a month. Don't even run in it. So put on the new shoe, get used to wearing it, and then introduce the shoe maybe uh, in one run a week. And then the next week, maybe two runs. And then that slow transition. And then finally, you've made the full from one type to another. And then you can go from a moderate to a low. And that really helps people get their strength up, allows the bones and the tissues to adapt so you don't get into this, this overload injury issue. I think that's I think that's great advice. And anybody who has tried to do barefoot running after not doing barefoot running ever for a long period of time knows that you know the next day yeah. you wake up and your your calves are <laughs> nice yeah. and tight. So definitely go into go into these and implement that slowly. Um, any actually, I'll save this for the listener question. I was going to ask a little bit about barefoot shoes, but somebody had a question about that, so we can maybe uh, discuss that. But um, yeah, I appreciate that advice. I think again. One of the main things that people ask about and struggle with is deciding on what pair of shoes to wear. So there's so many different brands out there. And I think if they follow the strategies that you just recommended, I think that can be a perfect way to select something that's going to keep you uh, injury free. Yes. I, um, each year, we actually try and go through the new ones that are coming out and go through all the criteria. Are they meeting generally what we would want to look for? So that way, when runners come in, they're not still just trying to wing it and figure it out on their own. We provide different brands with the models that fit that. So if you're a Saucony person or you're a Nike person or this, we try and get something for all different brands. Um, if it meets it, give it a go and see, see how that works. If you don't like a particular kind, try out a few. So it's always helpful to have a few different kinds in the background that you can mix and match, change up. It's good to mix up the shoes a little bit. That's perfectly okay. But just don't jump from a really high drop to a low drop. So stay within the same category, if that makes sense. Yes, awesome. Makes perfect sense. Okay, so I'd like to end on some...